Right, so as you may well have seen, we have just brought out a beautiful range of commercial foam floats. And what I thought I'd do today is have a nice little cover of the ones that I've chosen. You know what I mean? I'm not one for having three million different types of floats in my box. I like to keep things nice and simple, and I want specific floats for specific things. Keep things nice and limited, just so I don't confuse myself. So, my choice is keeping things nice and simple, as I said. They need to suit my style of fishing. I mean, I do a lot of silver type fishing, a lot of F1 fishing, a lot of more delicate type carp fishing. I mean, I'm unfortunate enough to live up in the north where fishing is a little bit more di difficult and the fish are a bit smaller. So that suits the style of rigs that I often take with me. First up, the finesse style of float. I mean, there was no range was ever going to be complete without having some nice, lovely, I mean, the sexy floats, if you like. And we've done quite a few different versions of these, but for me, again, keeping things nice and nice and simple, I've got standard, very, very popular, slim style of float, both in carbon and in wire. I mean, that do most of my hard pellet, maggot, f one -y type fishing, whenever I'm fishing in deep water. They're the two I'm going to choose for that, both in a wire and a slim. We also do a stubby in that case as well, in the slim, which is for uh, fishing against your islands. But for me, it's all been cold at the minute, nothing to do with shallow water. So I've been using very much these two floats for all of my nice, delicate work that just fish beautifully. I mean, they're both fitted with standard eyes, just for your sexy fishing. They're just lovely finesse floats that work the same all day. A big emphasis was put on that in making sure we had floats that perform consistently. We don't want them taking on water, we don't want them breaking. They're, they're as good as you can possibly get that any handmaker could make, which was very, very difficult to get in the commercially type made world. Next up, and these are your summer floats that we've had a bit of a go with these on the old prototypes that we've had over the last couple of seasons, but now we've finally settled on ones that are going to be my floats for the summer. And I'm actually in the process of tying up as we speak because things are finally warming up a little bit. And they're very similar style floats. I mean, I'm a big, big fan of the slim, elongated rugby ball style float, you know what I mean, as you see in these two, which is our power margin and our power carp floats. Big, big, big fan of those for all my hard pellet fishing, my short fishing, places like the Glebe where my kit's going to get a bit of a kick in. I need that bit of a bigger stem where I'm in um, bristle where I may not need as much finesse as it is with the F1 fishing. I'm going to use those floats for all my big carp fishing, Larford, wherever I need to fish big heavy lines, big heavy elastics. And finesse goes out the window a little bit because your rigs can be a little bit more durable. And within that range as well, I've just chucked in then. One of the standard margin stroke mudline type floats. Massively popular, probably the most popular float available these days. That sort of standard float for commercial fishing during the summer. I mean, there was no way we were going to not include one of them for the really shallow swims, both on the margins uh, and across the islands as well. I mean, really, really popular float they are at this time of year. And lastly, so back on the northern theme, and I'm very much all little girly type shallow fishing that I do. And the floats again for shallow fishing were always going to be sort of covering my sort of options um, for F1 fishing and for a bit more delicate carp fishing. So let me grab them one at a time. So firstly, obviously F1 shallow, really, really popular style of float that I may need when I'm fishing really, really shallow. I prefer to use a diamond than an elongated rugby ball style pattern, when I'm fishing really shallow, sort of 18 inches or less, I'm going to either choose a dibber that I'll come on to in a minute, or if I want a bristle, then I'm going to use these lovely little F1 diamond. Still with a nice light bristle, it's got a 1.5 mil hollow bristle, in, hollow bristle in that, so not too much resistance on the float, just does what I needed to do. Same again, nice standard eyes. In fact, now I'm telling the first, we swapped the eyes on these ones, and we've gone to the same eye that we're using on all the power version range, the carp version of the range, and that we're going to call it a power eye which isn't actually fixed into the body of the float. It actually goes in the top of the body, but it's wrapped around the stem as well, which means you've not got the pressure of the eye pulling on the body of the float, which can in turn rip it out. It's just, it's not gonna happen. They're so durable, you literally cannot break them by trying to pull, pull the eye out unless, unless you're stupid anyway. So yeah, that's the F1 version, ready for my F1 fishing. But also, I've got my carp version, what are we gonna call it? The carp shallow float sort of thing that I like when I'm fishing a bit deeper. I mean, I like using this in slightly bigger sizes, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, for when I'm fishing deeper for carp. When I'm fishing up to like three, three and a half foot, and I'm actually fishing through the water, for carp, I often like a bristled float. So a two mil bristle that can withstand the weight of a, an eight mil pellet, a six mil pellet, a big lump of meat, who knows what, but while still fishing fairly sensitively, if you like, with a bristle that I can read for them days when carp are a little bit moody. And lastly, there'll be no possible way I'm gonna miss out with a dibber, it's what I use these days for 
flipping heck, 99% of my carp fishing. I mean, whenever I'm mugging, fishing within 18 inches of the surface and shallower, it's always, always going to be dibber, which will double up as well as my really shallow water, cast a shallow F1 style dibber as well. But when I'm fishing tight lines, bolt rigs, all that sort of thing, we were never, ever, ever not going to have a dibber. And that one fits that perfectly. So a lovely little simple range to say, I've not gone through all of the floats even, there's plenty more patterns available that some of the other lads are going to go through. But for me, that's my selection that's going to cover all the fishing I do with a lovely reliable float that doesn't let me down, doesn't change during the day, and above all else, does not break. So well worth a little nose if you fancy some new posh floats.